guys, welcome to another episode of the Natural Herb Keeper and today I'm going to introduce you to my two scrub pythons, sticks and stones. Now we've got stones just sitting up here behind me at the moment having a nice morning bath. Uh, she's my female, she's about seven years old and she's coming in at just under three metres in length. Her mate, sticks, okay, the big boy is currently in his log, he's chilling out down the bottom there. He's coming in at about 3.5 to 3.6 meters, so they're quite large snakes. Now, I always advocate for keeping reptiles outdoors if you can, okay, uh, if you're living in the right climate to do so. Now, I'm pretty lucky living here in tropical North Queensland. Uh, it's perfect for our scrub pythons. In fact, I have these guys cruising through the yard uh, quite regularly and we've seen them breeding in the creek right behind us here which is pretty awesome now because these are quite large snakes okay uh, there's a lot of waste material that comes with them and no amount of bioactive setup is going to be able to handle the waste from such a large animal so we're going to jump in we're going to uh, give it a bit of a clean today it's got a large pond in here as well uh, that needs a bit of a water change now, currently we do have both of them in here together. Uh, it is breeding season. Normally I'd have these two separated. Uh, Stones' enclosure is just over there, uh, offside from the camera. And um, they've been brought together for breeding. Now it is looking very promising. In fact, I think she's only a couple of weeks off laying, so that'll be super exciting uh, if we get another clutch out of her. And uh, we're going to see a few of her nest boxes set up in here, make sure everything's all nice and comfy and she's all good to, uh, to lay those eggs. And while she is in this enclosure, we're actually gonna take the opportunity to redo her uh, enclosure as well. So once we tidy up in here, we'll jump on over, have a look at her old enclosure, revamp that a little bit for her, get it ready so we can shift her straight back in there once she's uh, laid her eggs and um, start feeding her again okay she has now refused food since may so it's getting quite a long time but that's quite natural for these animals especially during the breeding season so we're going to jump in we're going to start tidying this up uh, and i'll show you guys a little bit about maintenance and bioactive outdoor enclosures all righty guys so this is uh the scrub python enclosure at the moment and um as you can see it is quite sizable so it's a bit of an odd shape we've got two meters here at the front then it goes back two meters three meters across that back wall there and then back out to the front so this is our lovely mama to be this is stones my female she's uh, having her morning bath so at the moment she's been spending most of her day down in her nest box and uh, she comes out in the morning for a couple of hours warms up a little bit and then heads back down there for the rest of the day. And the male, let's see if we can find him, is hanging out down here in his log. All right, you can just see him cruising in there. That sticks, that's our big boy. We've actually got a bit of food for him. As soon as we get this uh, enclosure tidied up, we'll offer him something to eat. So as you can see, we've got a couple of different options for nesting. We've got a polystyrene box over here that's full of sphagnum and cane mulch we have a second polystyrene box over in the corner there it's a bit hard to see at the moment and as you can see sticks has uh decided to use that one as a bathroom so that's what we've got to get in and clean today and then finally we have a pile of palm fronds so anyone from North Queensland will be familiar with palm fronds and scrubbies love to nest in them. Okay, I've been called to quite a few uh, snake call outs where we've found a female scrubby sitting on a pile of eggs underneath a bunch of palm fronds. So I've chucked those in there for her as well. Uh, just gives her plenty of different options. Now the pond needs a bit of a water change today. This pond uh, holds about uh, 100 or so litres of water. It's fairly deep in there, so it's a nice cool reservoir for them to jump into during the hot months. Uh, and it's fully planted, as you can see here. It's got lots of different uh, plants in there. And we've also got a few species of fish. There's some rainbow fish, some guppies, a few snails, some yabbies, uh, some cleanup crew in there like shrimps uh, and uh, some little algae eaters as well. So we're going to give that a bit of a water change today tidy everything up give the uh, plants in here a bit of a trim and uh, as I said we will jump right back in and feed sticks once that's all done all right guys so 
In terms of pond maintenance, um, like I said, we are going to give this quick water change today. It is really important when you're working with water uh, features of any description, ponds, fountains, whatever you've got happening, that you have good drainage. I can't tell you the amount of ponds that I've worked with where the drainage is uh, severely inadequate and it just leaves to uh, a lot more work and a lot more headaches. So this one is plumbed here, it's a fairly decent size uh, pipe work. I think we're looking at like 30 mils there or something, uh, 30, 40 maybe. And um, it just has this valve, ball valve here on the top. So we can simply just crack that open a bit. It goes straight into the garden here beside us, waters my plants at the same time. I can control how much water comes out of that pipe work and it just makes water changes for uh, these large enclosures so much easier. So definitely put good plumbing in, something that's not going to block up, uh, have as least amount of joins and elbows and bends in it as you possibly can. It will make your life a lot easier. Alrighty guys, so that's maintenance done on this enclosure. As you can see, it's pretty easy. We've picked up all that bulk waste material. Any of the little bits left will now be cleaned up uh, by all the isopods and other little critters getting around in the mulch and the soil in this enclosure. Pond's had a bit of a water change. Uh, there are heaps of fish in there at the moment. Looks like there's tons of baby fry, which is really cool to see. Stones are still sitting up here at the back enjoying her uh, morning sunbake. I'm sure it won't be long until she ducks down into one of those nest boxes. And if you wanna have a look at the entire enclosure, folks, we'll just come back here a little bit, give you a bit of a better idea of it. So you can see they've got a full sheet of tin across the back and one down on the, uh, the right-hand side there as well. That just helps to give them a little bit of protection from the weather. When the, uh, the wet season does kick off here, it can rain quite a bit. So that gives them a nice dry area to hang out in. They can get right up the front on those branches and bask under the sun if they'd like to. We've got a bit of tin around the bottom for outer protection. Just stops any of that sort of nose rub if they do happen to be pacing. Um, but I haven't had an issue with that with either of these two at all. And then if we come down here, we've got a bucket full of all the waste material that we pulled out of the enclosure. That's all uh, the fecal matter, uh, all the weeds that we've pulled and the plants that we've trimmed. So that's going to go down the back into uh, my sort of area where I dump all of that gear. That way it breaks down naturally and I can use that sort of compost back in other enclosures or around my gardens. So we're going to go in and check if the uh, rabbit for sticks is uh, finished defrosting and then we might come back out here and give him a quick feed before we head over to check out Stones' enclosure and start work on that one. All right, so we've got a nice big rabbit here for sticks this afternoon. These are one of his favorites, but we do give them a varied diet. So sometimes you'll get large rats, uh, maybe a chicken, or like today he's gonna get his favorite rabbit. So pretty keen for it as always. Now we're gonna leave him here for a little bit while we jump over and have a look at Stones' enclosure and see what we can do there. So as you can see, this enclosure uh, has been empty for a number of months now. It's looking pretty sad and tired. We've got a lot of dead plants in here that we need to get rid of. We'll do another water change on the, uh, the pond there. Uh, and we'll put a lot more perching in this enclosure for her as well. So we're going to jump down to start with, uh, start pulling out all these weeds down the bottom. We're going to put a bit of an extra barrier in there this time. Uh, so that we can put a much thicker layer of mulch in there. So heat is obviously a consideration during the summer months up here. So a nice deep layer of mulch will enable her to get in and bury down and cool off if she needs to. We've got all those new vines that we're going to chuck in here as well. So we've popped that in, mulch is in, pond is cleaned, uh, all the dead plants are taken out and as you can see all those vines have been put in here as well. So uh, plenty of perching areas for her. She's got a nice big basking ledge there at the back that's uh, nice and high and out of the weather if she'd like to choose to, uh, to sit up there. All these branches so she can pick the perfect spot to regulate her body temperature, different thicknesses and sizes so she can get comfortable there. 
And in summer, she'll actually drop down under that pond and bury into the mulch to stay nice and cool. Now this is um, set up in our garden, okay? So it's covered in plants, which again helps with that temperature. Okay, so back over to sticks now. And as you can see, he is enjoying that rabbit. So he's going to make very quick work of that. Doesn't take him long to get these down. Today he's obviously decided that eating it up in the branches was more preferred, but uh, look at him go. Powered that straight down, no problem at all. Alrighty guys, well that just about wraps us up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about our scrub pythons and how we keep them outdoors in one of our bioactive enclosures. Now if you do have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments. Uh, if you like this, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like buttons. And we will see you on the next episode of The Natural Herb Keeper.